Enjoying secrets of a sugar daddy? How about a little something extra? Here's today's dose of extra sugar with Marcus. Hey, this is Marcus, and welcome to this segment of Extra Sugar. Today we are going to talk about ghosting. What is ghosting? Basically, it's when a friend or romantic interest disappears without explanation. So ghosting is a relatively new colloquial dating term that refers to abruptly cutting off contact with someone without giving that person any warning or explanation for doing so. Even when the person being ghosted reaches out to reinitiate contact or gain closure, they're met with silence. As you can see, it's called ghosting because it involves someone essentially vanishing into thin air as if they were a ghost. The term is generally used in reference to a romantic relationship, but it can technically refer to any scenario where contact unexpectedly ceases, including friendships and family relationships. So, signs of ghosting? Well, ghosting is often obvious, but it can also be a gradual process. The other person might start off by soft ghosting, where they progressively minimize contact over a period of time. Some early signs that someone might be ghosting you include they regularly bail out on plans to get together, they struggle to make commitments, they don't like to share personal information, they don't want you to meet their friends or family, they disappear from social media, they rarely respond to your texts or calls, and your conversations with them lack depth and they seem disinterested. If you've made repeated efforts to contact someone and they won't respond, it is a strong indicator that you've been ghosted. Ghosting can also occur on social media. It involves cutting off all social media contact with another person without explanation. The other person may unfriend, unfollow, or even block you on all social media platforms. They may even go so far to deactivate or delete their social accounts to prevent all contact. So the history of ghosting, it became mainstream about seven years ago alongside the surge in online dating. It became an official entry in the Merriam-Webster Dictionary in 2017. Interestingly, though, the term was actually used as far back as the 1990s. Some pop culture writers and scholars have even used the term to describe ghostwriting and hip-hop music. The word ghosting gained popularity long before 2017, via hip-hop often in the sense of escaping. Though a new term, the act of ghosting existed well before the digital age. I think references of going for a loaf of bread and never coming back are examples of ghosting, says Bree Jenkins, a dating coach in Los Angeles, California. Ghosting used to be leaving a person and moving away or not leaving them with your contact information. Its earlier origins are even the simple act of leaving a party or social gathering without notice and goodbyes. So how did the term become popular? Why did the term ghosting become mainstream just within the last decade? The argument is that online dating has simply made it way easier to ghost people. With the higher frequency of ghosting instances, and with more people who could relate and understand being ghosted, or doing the ghosting, the term was widely adopted. So why do some people choose to ghost? Ghosting is often seen as immature or passive-aggressive way to end a relationship. In other instances, It may even be a form of emotional abuse. There are two primary reasons why a person ghosts another, and often it's a combination of the two. Well, it's the easy route. The first is that some find it's way easier, in short term anyway, to ghost someone than to have an awkward, uncomfortable heart-to-heart and why you're not interested in maintaining contact. The person doing the ghosting often wants to avoid confrontation or dealing with someone else's hurt feelings. So they simply cease all communication and hope the hint is delivered. Option overload and fatigue. With internet dating comes what may seem like infinite choices as opposed to walking into a bar and having limited choices, explains Margaret Side, a board-certified psychiatrist based in New York City. Because there are so many choices, online daters are quick to have the okay next or the yeah but what else mindset, says Side. Sometimes the person is nice enough, but is juggling a few other people, and that person just didn't make the cut. 
There are also other reasons why people ghost, including being fearful of the person's reaction to rejection. How ghosting can impact the ghosted? As you can imagine, or know from personal experience, ghosting can have a real psychological impact on the person who is being ghosted. Bree Jenkins says it's almost like sudden loss or grief, especially the first time you've ever been ghosted. You're shocked and you're in denial, thinking such things as, maybe they didn't see my text. Then you feel anger. Jenkins adds, next the feelings of depression can kick in along with the feelings of poor self-esteem as you mentally re-examine your relationship and last conversation for possible warning signs. Ghosting is inherently ambiguous because there is a lack of explanation for why the relationship ended. For the person who has been ghosted, it can lead to significant feelings of rejection, guilt, grief, and shame. A person who has been ghosted may be left wondering what this type of behavior says about them, but it is important to remember that ghosting says more about the person who cuts off contact than the person who is ghosted. Working through grief after being ghosted. The grief cycle may not run that exact course, but being ghosted often triggers a flood of ranging emotions. Thoughts of, not only did this person not want to date me, but I wasn't even deserving of an explanation, can make someone feel dehumanized and devalued. It's often more painful when it's a relationship that marinated a bit, but the ghosted person can also feel this way if it was a new connection. It can take some time to work through the pain, but with acceptance, the person being ghosted can move on. To gain closure in a situation where you feel you've been ghosted, Mead says it can help to send a message by saying something like, Hey, I haven't heard from you in a while. I'm not sure what happened, but I don't want to continue pursuing this. My time is valuable and I don't want to leave this door open. Best of luck with things. While the ghoster may not respond, it can help provide closure. How ghosting can impact the ghoster. Ghosting doesn't just impact the ghosted, it also is a detriment to the ghoster. The bottom line here is that ghosting is either a passive-aggressive way to end a relationship or it's the easy way out. Either way, it's not doing the ghoster any favors in their ability to communicate with others. Ghosting doesn't take into account how you affect other people and it makes it easier for the person to dip out or disengage when things get uncomfortable. There's no way to have a healthy, long-term relationship without being able to work through problems and use your communication skills. Jenkins adds that ghosters create unhealthy problems, solving patterns for themselves, and that they also contribute to a larger pattern of social flakiness that increases their chance of being ghosted as well. Alternatives to ghosting someone. Avoiding the easy route of ghosting someone will benefit both parties. Mead says that the best thing you can do when ending a relationship, however long or short, is to treat the other person as you'd like to be treated. I usually suggest two spoons of sugar with the medicine in the middle for delivery, Mead says. It can sound something like, Hey, you seem like a really great catch, but I don't feel it's working between us. I respect your time and just wanted to be honest. Warm regards and take care. Or, hi, it's been cool getting to know you, but I've decided to take a break from dating and don't want to waste your time or be dishonest. Best of luck with everything. These messages are short, sweet, honest, and end with an outro to signal that you don't want to have a long and drawn out conversation. It's possible that you may get a negative or hurt reaction from the other person, but it's far better to exit the relationship after giving an explanation than to ghost completely. Is ghosting someone ever okay? In many cases, ghosting is considered a rude route to take when trying not to talk to someone anymore, or especially when ending a more serious or established relationship. However, there are most definitely exceptions when further communication can be a bad thing or even potentially unsafe. Situations in which ghosting can make sense is if you find out the person is married or in a relationship participating in illegal or unsavory behaviors, or if they display toxic traits. In such cases, you do not owe that person an explanation for abruptly ending the relationship. If you are uncomfortable or feel threatened by someone in any way, remember it's best to follow your gut instinct. You may simply have a bad feeling. In cases like this, you don't need to prove that this person deserved to be ghosted. Ghosting might be a useful mode or self-protection and peace of mind. If you feel your best interest would be to completely cut off contact with the person in question, don't let your feelings of guilt keep you from doing what's right for you 
and what will ultimately keep you safe. Ghosting has become more commonplace in the digital age, but just because something is easy or common doesn't mean it's always the ideal route to take. Consider how ghosting might impact both parties and do your best to treat others with kindness and honesty. If you're the person who's been ghosted, it's okay to feel confused, sad, and angry. Sending a quick note to end the relationship yourself can help you regain a sense of power and confidence in yourself and give you closure. However, if you feel threatened or deeply uncomfortable by someone, you don't owe them anything. Sometimes ghosting, when used thoughtfully, can be a healthy mode of self-protection and removing yourself from a potentially bad situation. Thanks for listening to this segment of Extra Sugar. And don't forget to catch our full episodes every Tuesday where we have a lot of fun talking about sugar dating and you never know who's going to be our next guest. Maybe it's you. Talk to you soon. We hope you enjoyed your extra sugar with Marcus. As always, visit our website, secretsofasugardaddy.com to comment or tell us your story. 